Um, we can see uh, Mr. Webb here, for instance, when he was officiating in the Premier League, uh, getting some really encouraging um, verbal persuasion uh, from the crowd uh, behind him. I'm sure they're telling him what a great job he's doing. And although they, he may have made a mistake, they appreciate the demands of the role. So what we want to do is we want to try to think of a way where referees can experience positive verbal persuasion before, during, and after performance. And the thing is, you're not going to get it from the people in the crowd. You're not going to get it from the coach. Even when you make decisions in their favor or good decisions, they're just not going to say anything. Okay. So how do you get it? So you've got to do it yourself. And that's where self-talk comes in. So what are the principles of self-talk as this concept, as this canon of sports psychology? Well, it's defined as the internal chatter within our heads. It sounds really scientific, doesn't it? Of course not. But it's, that's all it is, okay? It's, it's the thoughts that we have, the commentary that we provide ourselves, and we do it all the time. I remember in the last game where I was refereeing, I remember vividly just like this thought popping into my head where I just thought, well, I'm bloody knackered, and it's only 10 minutes into the game. Like, where's that internal thought come from? Where's that internal chatter uh, kind of like, you know, penetrated from? But it, but it was there. You know, and what effect does that have on my performance? Because we know that verbal persuasion impacts our levels of self-efficacy. I remember thinking to myself, God, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I can keep up, like, for the rest of the game. How am I going to get through this game? Of course, one, that's going to make me feel that I can't do it, impact my perceived level of success, which impacts my actual success. But in addition to that, of course, what am I not doing while I'm thinking these things? I'm, I'm probably not paying as much attention to the match as I should be because I'm having this like internal dialogue. And we know that self-talk is important because it's one of the most powerful, well-researched and effective ways of improving performance. And there's a, a wealth of research to support this fact. So some of the benefits of self-talk uh, include increasing the time it takes to reach exhaustion. So maybe I should have practiced some self-talk in that incident. incident. Um, so I wouldn't have felt so exhausted so early. So it would have taken me longer to get to the point of exhaustion. I didn't get through the game, by the way. I just needed my second win. Uh, and it helps us move from a challenge to a threat state. I mentioned that in a previous talk with the Wisdom Academy, you know, I, had, uh, I, I spoke about challenge and threats. So do we see things as a threat to our ego? Do we see things as something that's going to make us anxious? Do we see something that's going to make us angry? Or do we see something as a challenge? Do we see something as an opportunity uh, to, to meet a goal or to meet a demand or get me closer to doing that? Um, we know that self-talk can help us improve our performance. So there's actually kind of tangible benefits. People that practice self-talk, they actually perform better. They actually kind of get more results what they want. Uh, we know that it can increase our attention, and we know that attention in, uh, in officials is really important. And we know that with attention, there's not just one type of attention. So, for instance, we might have narrow and external type of attention, which is where we're looking at things outside of ourselves and very focused. A good example of this would be if we have Cristiano Ronaldo running a defender uh, and he's approaching the penalty area, we may only be looking at his feet and the ball. And we want to see if there's any contact um, and we're going to be looking at his feet and maybe like the defender's tackle coming in. So at that po point in time, what I'm not doing is paying any attention to the other players on the pitch or the scoreline or the time or anything like that. So that would be an example of like external narrow attention. And then we might have something like um, narrow internal attention. So, for instance, one uh, UEFA referee reported to me that when there's times that he finds quite stressful or he feels he may have made a mistake, he says, I just go back to the basics and I find time to breathe. And I actually just take three seconds out of the game and think, just focus on your breathing, like nothing else. And he said, often, like, you know, if a player is kind of like getting ready to take a free kick or I'm in position a bit early or, uh, you know, a player's waiting to take a throw in, I'll just think to myself, just for these three seconds, just think about your breathing, like nothing else. So that's a good example of how a referee can switch attention from one type of attention to another. And we know that self-talk can help impact that and develop it. We also know that self-talk can enhance our confidence and our cognitive and our emotional control, all of which have been reported as really valuable, invaluable really, to officiating performance, particularly emotional control. And there's lots of anecdotal evidence to support that as well. So now we know 
why we will want to do self-talk and we know a little bit of the theory behind self-talk yes kind of what we really want to know is in the kind of you know the, the, the meat of the session if you like as we enter this final third is what are the types of self-talk so what things might we do um and are there different kind of ways of approaching self-talking yeah there are five there are five different types of self-talk and we go through each one now and really what i want to kind of impart with you is you may think okay well type one really would work for me and but the other ones not so much or you might think type four or you might think type four and five or so on and so forth you might think all five maybe you will it doesn't really matter what matters is, is you think okay which one is going to impact me or my colleague or whoever the most in the most benefit beneficial way and how can i implement it and hopefully that's what we're going to take away really from these sessions so the first one here what is it so it's Technical, excuse me, technical self-talk is the first one. So what's technical self-talk? So it's when a performer will give themselves a specific instruction. And this instruction is normally applied to like a process. So it, it's kind of what do I need to do in order to execute this well? It could be, for instance, like a tennis player where before they're going to take a serve, thinking, okay, make sure I get a really nice high toss and extend my arm on contact. So it could be something like that. So it's normally quite technical. And it's normally looking at the process behind skill execution. And we know that technical self-talk is especially useful when applied to strength and or accuracy of, of a movement. And we need to focus on what needs to be done, not what shouldn't be done. So for instance, like if you're going to take a penalty kick, you wouldn't necessarily say to yourself, don't miss. You might think about what you might want to do to score. And rather than just saying score, kind of obvious, doesn't work. Um, it always reminds me of a, of a great joke in The Simpsons where um, Troy McClure, the self-talk, you know, self-help guru, um, says uh, he's got a new book out called Get Confident Stupid. It's a little bit like that, you know, we don't just say score and then you score or don't miss, you know. Um, it's What we need to do is think about, like, okay, so how, how would we score? What could we do to improve our likelihood of scoring? So some examples here. So, so I've put in red like the negative examples. So it could be like don't for a match official, it could be don't make a mistake today. We might want to avoid self-talk like that because one, it's not very helpful. Two, it's focusing on what we shouldn't be doing. And three, there's nothing to worry about the process today. So rather than saying, well, don't make a mistake today, what we might change that to is get into good wide positions for the best for you. But that's an example of self-talk that's looking at the process, i.e. what should be done. And it's realistic as well. So we're not just saying, oh yeah, you're the best. Um, make sure you get every decision right today. It, or, you know, like rather than saying don't make a mistake today, it's like saying get everything right. Well, you know, how do I get everything right? Another thing we might say to yourself is don't lose control. I had one referee say to me um, and something that he finds really difficult to deal with is like the mass confrontation. And I said, okay, what goes through your head? And he says, don't lose control. Like, don't lose control. I'm like, okay, well, one, like, you can't control the behavior of 22 other adults on, on a football pitch. Uh, in fact, it's really hard to do. And we like to think we can as match officials, but it's really difficult. And you can't really be expected to. And in that situation, what can you do? You know, you can't physically restrain people. And even if you could, you can physically restrain 22 people. The same to yourself, don't lose control, might not be particularly helpful. What might be more helpful in that situation is to look at the process. So start to kind of shift that self-talk into like, okay, so what should you be doing at that time? So I, we wanted to change that from stay calm and control what you can. And I think there's some nice examples of just how we can shift that. Of course, not the only examples of technical self-talk for officials, but some. Uh, the second type of self-talk is for, uh, thought stopping. So thought stopping is where we might have a negative thought come into our head and we don't necessarily want to shift to something. We just want to stop. We just want to kind of stop that negative thought coming. So if you're someone that might experience levels of like, anxiety or you might experience kind of like difficult experiences whilst you're officiating, this is something that you might want to consider. So it's where you would purposely tell yourself to stop whenever you experience an unhelpful Thought, sorry, excuse me, an unhelpful thought. Uh, and this is normally really short and it can maybe just be like one word, but it can even be an action to help you stop that thought. So for instance, a really nice one that I have, um, when I was doing my uh, a previous study, uh, I was fortunate enough to interview um, elite level match officials, but not just in football, but also in rugby. And a rugby premiership referee said that he writes uh, on the palm of his hand the word reset before every game. And he said, the reason he does it is twofold. He said, whenever I make a mistake, I look at that word 
And if I think about that mistake, which he doesn't want to do, because if he's thinking about the mistake, one, he said it makes me feel less confident because I kind of feel, well, I made a mistake there. It wasn't very good. Second of all, if I'm thinking about it, I'm not focusing on the next decision, which is more important. I can't change my previous one. He said, so I look at this word, reset, and it stops that. And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, well, you know, you just described this wonderful psychological theory, and you probably don't even know that you're applying that. You just do it kind of naturally. So it could be something like reset, refocus, and you could write it down. You can write it on your sweatband. Um, some referees have got stuff on their whistles, things like this. Whatever it takes, okay, to stop that thought instantly. Some people might use a sweatband. So I've spoken to some referees that have said what they'll do is if they make a mistake, they'll like wipe their forehead with their sweatband. And they say, could they kind of like picture, right? So me doing that is me getting rid of that mistake. So okay, I have just had a thought pop into my head, like get rid of that one. Um, a nice other practical example, not from officiating, comes from golf. So Tiger Woods uh, once stated that whenever he uh, has played a bad shot, he said he'll walk to you know, where the ball lay so he can take his next shot. He said, I'm thinking about that on that walk. And he said, and as soon as I spot the ball, that's, that's like a trigger for me to stop thinking about it. He says, now all I need to, I don't need to focus on the previous shot. I just need to focus on the next one. As soon as I see the ball on that walk, that's when I stop doing it. The third type of uh, self-talk are uh, cue words. So a cue word, again, it's a single word and it helps you focus on something very specific. And this is really what I said, uh, it all, all goes back to what I said earlier about, you want to make this bespoke to you. This needs to be very applicable for you and what you are experiencing as a match official. So for instance, it could be a single word to help you focus on something incredibly specific that's relevant to you. And this could be to narrow attention. So you might want to focus on one particular thing, or it could be to widen attention. Often like we find match officials, the reason they make mistakes is because they're too focused on one area. And um, so they're just looking at the ball all the time. They don't have that trading eye to look whether that challenge was slightly late, or they're not seeing what's going on in the whole picture, or they're only focusing on the player in possession. They don't see the speed of the challenge coming in, things like this. So it's particularly useful if trying to change strategy. There's some examples I feel are really relevant for match officials. This could be the word calm. So it could be that's your keyword. So when you need to make a decision, before you make that decision, we just say to ourselves, calm. It could be control. It could be high focus. So we know that you know there's a breakaway. Uh, it's 1v1. That's where you might go, right, high focus. I need to know what's going on anywhere else on the pitch right now. I need to focus on this. Or you could say, right, wide focus. And actually say these words to yourself in this internal monologue so you can switch between those types of attention. And then uh, the fourth type of self-talk would be motivational. So this is where there's less focus on the process, but it's great effort, greater focus on the effort that you need to achieve your goal. So really, we're not looking at how you would achieve it. It's just like, what do I need to do physically to achieve this? So it could be useful in activities where performers are alone prior to competition. I mean, when I read this research, I'm just like, how come no one has looked at this with match officials so far? Because match officials are almost always alone prior to competition and particularly alone during competition. You know, I appreciate there's communication with assistants occasionally, but often that's not the case, particularly at lower levels of officiating. And it's also really useful pre-performance or mid-performance if you're experiencing doubt. So maybe pre-performance, the motivational self-talk is what officials use rather than during or after. And these are where statements are purposeful, memorable, and short. And again, purposeful means bespoke to you and what's relevant to you. So for instance, if uh, a match official is experiencing difficulty trying to stay calm or in control, or if they're worried about their ability to stay calm and in control, that might be what they say to themselves. I'm calm and in control. That's motivational self-talk. It could be, I can keep up with play. Um, I spoke to some officials in my book and what, one of the quotes that I give from a previous referee was he said frequently during the game, he would say to himself, keep going, keep up with play. That's motivational self-talk within performance. It could be like kind of a series of short words. Uh, I use this example, quick, calm, confident. Uh, I tend to say that to myself before games to go, okay, so the three areas or the three things that I kind of want to be today are quick, calm and confident. If I can achieve those three things, then great. I'm looking at how I achieve those things. It's just motivational. So this is before performance. And final one, and this is where I think is, is it takes what a, time, a, little, a little bit of time, I think, to practice this approach of self-talk and to perfect it. But I think it's really worthwhile to do so is reframing. And reframing occurs or is needed because we all do this. We all attach an inference to an event that either occurs or may not occur. 
for instance, that official that said, um, I, you know, I kind of fear the mass confrontation. When I asked him why, when I said, oh, why is that body? He said, oh, because people will feel that I'm useless. Like that's, a, that's the inference. The inference is if this happens, then I must be useless. Um, and it might not even have happened yet. And also it may not be true. It might be true. Maybe they think he is useless, but it might not even occur or it might not be true. So what we want to do is that these thoughts that we have, I think our natural instinct is to try to suppress them. So when we're thinking, I could get nervous, we're like, right, I just, I just want to get rid of this feeling of anxiety right now. I just want to get rid of it. And actually, like, that really rarely works. We can't just turn it off. Again, it's like you know, if someone's really agitated and you tell someone to calm down, it's normally the worst thing you can say to them because suppression doesn't really work. What we have to do is try to reframe those thoughts. And this is particularly useful when dealing with stress, fear of failure and judgment from others. I mean, come on, when I read that, I just instantly think, yeah, well, referees experience that on a you know, match day basis. And it also improves our perceived emotional coping ability. And we established earlier that like emotional control is a well-known area of uh, sound refereeing performance. So for instance, uh, an example here might be, um, you know, before a game, you know, you've been given a, that appointment with a team that is going to be particularly kind of physical or particularly uh, vocal in their dissent, something like that. And you might say to yourself, I hate refereeing this team. Like, I'm sure we've all done that. So that might be a good example of, well, that inference then, I hate refereeing this team. There's certain inferences that come with that. I'm not going to enjoy this. It's going to be really difficult. Um, it's going to be a big challenge, something like this. Why don't we change that, right? So rather than saying I hate refereeing this team, it's this will be a challenge. Use this as a learning curve. Or, you know, previously this team were really poor or previously I didn't handle this team that well. What strategies can I adopt to today? Or I can try some new things today to try to develop as a referee. So that's how we talk about reframing. So it's not me saying to you, well, I just want to get rid of that feeling of anxiety. I'm saying, why don't we try to use that feeling and reframe it into a more positive outcome? I don't feel fit enough today. I've certainly thought that before. I remember after the first lockdown, we first came back into officiating games. I remember you know, saying, saying to somebody, you know, I've got like an under 18 game today. These like fit 17 year old kids. How am I going to keep up with them? So I don't feel fit enough today. Um, how can we reframe that? Okay, get through the first five minutes. This is a good opportunity to test your fitness. Like it's true, right? So this isn't, you know, this, these are lies. These are true. We're just trying to reframe things as a challenge rather than a threat. Uh, another one might be people might think or might be thinking I'm awful. Um, I've certainly thought that, you know, you make a mistake, you hear a bit of dissent from the crowd, you think, oh, you know, I'm not sure about this. Okay, I can't control what people think, just control what you can. Something like that. And I think what's really important to do is to think about what you go through your head before. Uh, during and after officiating and actually write them down and then think right how might I reframe that so to review what we've done tonight um first of all we know that verbal persuasion and verbal encouragement is not often associated with the match officials in fact quite the opposite which is why I think it's quite a demanding role and self-talk is an effective efficient and pragmatic antidote and the reason for that is one we know that's so uh, embedded in research but the other reason I think that this is really important to consider or, or important to know is that ironically, you know, fans or players will say, you know, we just want good performances from refs. It's not really the case. What they really mean is we want the referee to not make mistakes against us, but we don't mind if they make mistakes for us. OK, what we want as match officials is a good performance because we don't care who wins. Right. So we need to think to ourselves, right, what can we do to offer verbal persuasion, verbal encouragement as an antidote? To all these things that are trying to constrain my performance, such as the crowd or the inferences that we attach to their opinions or the behavior of players, things like this. So we know there are extensive benefits to performance as we've established. And we know that self-talk can be utilized pre-performance and or during performance. And then finally, we know that self-talk should be bespoke and it should be meaningful to the individual. So when we kind of review those five types of self-talk, Ideally, what we should be doing is like, which one's going to be able to make the most kind of impact for me? Like personally, I look at motivational and I look at reframing. So those are the two areas that for me really help. Occasionally technical, I tend not to do thought stopping purely because for me, I don't find that works particularly well. And I don't really feel the need to. That's not to say it doesn't work. It could be the best one for you or a colleague. But I think that's a really important kind of distinction to make. I think when people think I, I'll do self-talk, they just try to do everything and they try to make it very general. So think like what kind of 
two or three areas would be really beneficial to me, would it be most beneficial before, during or after performance, um, and, and how can I change the things that actually go through my head in order to make them more positive, to give myself greater levels of verbal persuasion, to increase my confidence and therefore success.